Good morning everybody. Welcome to my channel and uh, subscribe and hit that like button if you like. And um, I am so happy that y'all dropped in and uh, the subscribers I have, thank you so much. Uh, I have been gone for about a week and I'm back now. And we're going to start out with this article here. I've got some short ones and then I've got some uh, other lengthy ones. So we'll start out with a couple short ones first. And a uh, federal judge in Arizona has ruled in favor of the group Clean Elections USA, allowing them to active, actively monitor two ballot drop boxes in Maricopa County. District Court Judge and Trump appointee Michael Liberty wrote, Plaintiffs have not provided the court with any evidence that defendants conduct constitutes a, constitutes a true threat. On this record, defendants have not made any statements threatening to commit acts of unlawful violence to a particular individual or group of individuals. The case started according to the NPR because local and federal law enforcement have been alarmed by reports of people, including some were Mask and armed. Watch 24-hour ballot boxes in Maricopa County, Arizona's most popular county, and rural. Oh, why Vapai? Why a v a p a i? With a uh, yeah, Vapai County is midterm elections near. Here I go again with these funny words. <laughs> Some voters have complained a alleging voter intimidation after people watching the boxes took photos and videos and followed the voters. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Melody Jennings formed Clean Elections USA after watching Dinesh D'Souza's S-O-U-Z-A film 2000 Mules, a movie made to reveal rampant fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Maricopa County, where the monitoring is taking place, was crucial to President Biden's electoral victory. The Arizona Alliance for Retired Americans brought the suit against Jennings Group and were disappointed in Liberty's decision. Just prior to filing an appeal against Liberty's ruling, they wrote, we continue to believe that Clean Elections USA intimidation and harassment is unlawful. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I agree. You know, my goodness, Democrats are disappointed in the decision because they believe that the voter intimidation is one of the tactics being used by the ballot box monitors. The lawsuit even accused Clean Elections USA of violating the Q Klux Klan Act of 1871 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Republicans, on the other hand, are still weary of the 2020 election results, and they believe that if voting is happening the way it should be happening, nobody should have any issues with ballot boxes being monitored as long as it's done respectfully. I agree there. Arizona law states that election monitors may stay at least 75 feet away from the voting location, something that these monitors in Maricopa County appear to be doing. You know, you gotta, you gotta expect some protection uh, of the voters and when they're in the ballot box, that they're not intimidated or, or rushed or you know, because this has become such a unthinkable that there's danger everywhere. You can't even go and vote and be safe anymore. But I think part of that is due to the two years that we've been through. Because I can't picture that ever happening uh, before 2020. But I could be wrong. Never know. So let's go ahead and put that down. And let's see here. 
try this one here right quick. And I've got my coffee, and I've been up since 2.30. It's 4.43 a.m. my time now. And uh, I'm ready for good morning. I don't know about this one. GOP strange message about Pelosi family. Um, I do want to say that I sent lots of prayers to Mr. Pelosi. And um, this deal where they've come up that there was a third party in the house while he was being attacked. I have no clue about that. No. I, I keep watching and I keep reading and doing research. I've not come up with any more about that. That's kind of being kept hush-hush, I think. But it'll probably come out sooner or later, and I'll try to catch it, and a lot of you probably will catch it also. But this one here is, Republicans have been given mixed messages in response to the attack on Paul Pelosi. And God love him, I, I'm so thankful he's going to be okay. That, that was horrible. Unspeakable. The husband of Speaker Nancy Pelosi Many Democrats have blasted Republicans for their response. While many in the GOP, such as uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell in Kentucky, from Kentucky, and former Vice President Mike Pence, have been vocal about the attack and have condemned the action, others have not made any comments about it. Former President Trump, for example, has not spoken about the incident at all. But I heard he did send a message uh, and uh, prayers for Paul to recover. I'm sure I read that somewhere, but don't quote me on that. Please don't. Democrats have uh, also been crucial or critical of some of the political messaging that Republicans have been attaching to the event. I don't know anything about that. I guess I better read some more, do some more research. Uh, I do enough, but I'll do some more. Paul Pelosi was attached early Friday morning while he was in his home that he shared with his wife in San Francisco. The intruder who entered the house shouted, Where's Nancy? Where is Nancy? Before striking him, Mr. Pelosi with a hammer. Oh. According to the speaker's spokesperson, Paul Pelosi had to go undergo surgery to repair the skull fracture. He also had severe injuries on his hands and right arm. The man is expected by doctors to make a complete recovery. Well, he was trying to defend himself. He's so lucky. Oh, boy, he's so lucky. Prayers did help. McCon McConnell quickly responded to news of the incident, saying he felt horrified and disgusted. Yes, that was a horrible thing to happen by this underanged person. Pence similarly said that the assault was an outrage. House Minority Whip Steve Scalis of Louisiana, who had previously been shot during a congressional baseball practice in 2017, has frequently also spoken up against violence. Con congressional. I'll learn to pronounce these words, people. Don't give up on me. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said that in my videos. Oh, I do my best. Uh, I think I need to buy a new dictionary. Uh, and so I can look up all these words so I can spell them and speak them correctly. Eh? <laughs> Trump, who posted several things on Truth show, <laughs> Social, did not post anything mentioning the attack against Paul Pelosi. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, a Republican of California, has also not made any statements regarding the attack. However, his spokesman has said that McCarthy talked directly with Pelosi and has checked on her husband's health and prayed for him to recover. Oh, I think he had trillions and millions and billions of prayers. That was unthinkable. Yes, and I congratulated this. Uh, this was well written by a CFP staff writer. And uh, I gave her a very nice review on that. That was uh, what she could offer at the time. So, uh, but that is a terrible thing to happen to anyone. You know, and this person was mentally unstable 
and I made the uh, uh, comment that I can't imagine why he was out of a mental institution anyway because of his record. You know, they said that he had been unstable for a long time, you know. So why was he let out? No supervision, no nothing. And it's unthinkable that this would happen. And they're trying to blame Trump for it. All due to Trump. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I'm sure a lot of you don't either. Well, I'm going to uh, take a break. And um, I've got my whole desktop lined up here. So I'll pick out a couple more. And um, I will be back. God bless you. And you are a blessing.